The view from center court at Niagara Wheatfield. This is the center court game of the week. Tonight, we have the biggest game of the season to this point in the Niagara Frontier League is undefeated. Grand Island Vikings put their 10-0 record on the line here at the Falcon's Nest against Niagara Wheatfield, who comes in at 9-2 on the year. Both of these teams are unbeaten in league play and in the first place of their respected Division I and Division II places within the Niagara Frontier League. I'm Chad, or center court as you know me, joined alongside as always by my guy, the colorful coach, Ryan Mountain. Thank you, Chad. You know what? Well, it's a Buffalo Bills playoff weekend, and this gymnasium has a playoff feel. You've got the surprise 10 0 Vikings coming in, and then you've got the standard of the NFL the last couple years, Niagara Wheatfield. They just had back to back appearances in the Section 6 A1 championship and took home a sectional championship. So I don't know where you would rather be. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else than right here right now with this adrenaline and this awesome gymnasium. Totally agree with you. This was the game I wanted to be at tonight and that's why we're here. Tonight is going to tell us how good Grand Island really is. Their best opponents up to this point have been Luport and Ken West. They only beat Luport by a point and the game against Ken West, Ken West last week was interesting. They got down 12 points in the first quarter before battling back and they were still trailing entering the fourth quarter of that game before taking a big finish 22-9 for the final frame to keep themselves unbeaten. Their game on Tuesday was postponed against your former team, the North Tonawanda Jacks. That set the stage for them to come in undefeated tonight. Niagara Wheatfield is clearly the best team they've faced to date so far. The Falcons own a win over North Lockport. Big win over Star Point. They beat the number three small school from Newfane. Only two losses this year. One came to Lancaster who was unbeaten at the time. They just knocked off unbeaten Orchard Park last night. They only have one loss. Their other loss was to the number two small school in Western New York, Salamanca. So this is going to be, I think, a very evenly matched game, but I think it's going to be a true test for the Vikings. going to tell us right where they are and where they stand. Looks like we are skipping introductions. We are skipping national anthem. Players are coming to the court. They're getting ready to tip this thing off, Coach. Yeah, and one thing about the loss against Lancaster for the Falcons, uh, that was at 12.30 in the afternoon on a Saturday after battling Will North the night before. Uh, Chris Simpson is coming in uh, 4-0 in the NFL. He's got a few keys for success for tonight. Two, uh, number one, stop the two main players, uh, Luke Walk and Sean Watson. They're combining for 396 points between the two of them. He wants to make... Wheatfield work on defense and he also respects the physicality of the Falcons he wants to match that physicality so he wants to get physical with them uh, big matchup tonight uh, Chad we've got Luke Basilico a senior for Grand Island he's got some size and they're hoping to match that uh, size and battle on the boards with the great senior Luke Walk first basket was by who I'm sorry that is Roman Nuchero with the first basket of the game, number 33. Gets Grand Island on the board. And coming away with a rebound, that is number 10, Jace Wilkie. He's been the guy so far this year for Niagara Wheatfield. Comes into this game. Uh, he's their leading scorer, averaging 24 points a game for the Vikings. Yeah, and, and leads the team in three-point shots with 15. Now Coach O'Brien is going to like this play here by number 20. Nice steal by Jellen. Jellen not able to finish the layup. Rebound to Chero. And that is the eighth grader, K.J. Yep. Wilkes, bringing yep. up the ball for the team. Coach O'Brien's keys for su success. He wants to stay true to his offensive execution and uh, keep moving the ball. He really likes the way his team has been moving the basketball. They do play through the center, Luke Walk. But uh, as we talked earlier in past broadcast, getting the ball inside of the post is a great way to pass. Nice move there. Watson trying to get inside, denied Luke Basilico. Big block, good defensive positioning, stayed with the play, swats it away. Yeah, Basilico leads the Vikings in block shots with 26. And that's way to get points right off the inbound though. They send it in to Sean Watson with the cleanup. Two right. points for Watson. Right, this is another key for success from Coach O'Brien. 
He is uh, going to do a little 1 2 2 press to slow down the Vikings, uh, hope for a few mistakes so he can generate some easy baskets for his team. Basilico inside, missed. Rebound Evan Yudis, and he's immediately pushing it up court for the Falcons. Walk in the high post. Makes a spin move, tries to work inside. Basilico stays with him, picks up his second block. But Walk and stays with the play, gets a bucket for two Falcons. Yeah, and that's all right if you're Coach Simpson. Uh, Basilico with a nice block, and then Walk had to make a very difficult shot uh, contested. As you can see, you've got face guarding here from the Falcons on their best player, Jace Wilkie. That was a key for success from Coach O'Brien to contain Wilkie. He knows the average is about 23 points a game. Three-pointer missed by Nichero. Rebound, Luke Walk comes in the game averaging over 15 boards a game. That's one of many he'll grab today. Three-pointer there missed by Yudis. And back comes Grand Island. Wilkes three-pointer missed. Gary's follow-up attempt missed. Rebound, that's another one for Luke Walk. Yeah, and Grand Island's gonna have to capitalize on those offensive putbacks when they can because the uh, Falcons are so physical on the defensive boards that Grand Island's probably not gonna get a lot of second chance opportunities. Good ball movement here, good back screen here. This is one thing that Coach Simpson wants to do on the offensive end. He wants to make Niagara Wheatfield work on the defensive end. To be patient, not settle for good shots, work for great shots. Basilico kept that possession alive with his rebound, cleared it out to Wilkes, and we reset with Dane Brown up top. Basilico now leaves it for Gary, steps inside the line, puts up a low percentage jumper from just inside the perimeter, tries the glass, no good off the rebound, and it looks like the ball will turn back over. Possession Niagara Wheatfield coming back down. Yeah, the Falcons are built on defense and toughness and rebounding. Uh, right now they've given up three offensive boards. Coach O'Brien will address that at the end of the or in this next first timeout or if we get to the end of the first quarter. Because he knows if he doesn't take care of business on the defensive boards, that's going to be too many sh shot opportunities for the Vikings. That's been a staple of Grand Island for many years, that sideline fast break, looking to attack the basket up the sideline and in. But now great, great patience here. Coach Simpson with a timeout. And we've got a 30-second timeout. That'll be brought to us by Immediate Care, and we're going to stay right here for this one. So, Coach, 4-2 to two right now. Uh, it seems like we got the teams just trying to feel each other out and trying to figure out where they're going to get their offense from. Yeah, you have two veteran coaches. Coach Simpson's been coaching a long time. He had a great upset uh, in the early 2000s against um, McKinley when he was varsity coach's first go-around. Um, you know, so he's going to be prepared. Coach uh, Simpson. Coach Simpson, yes. Yes, they, uh, they actually had to play at uh, Kenmore West, and, and they were disappointed because they didn't get a chance to play the semis in Buff State. They bowed out in the championship. But uh, in any event, and then obviously Coach O'Brien, uh, born with a basketball in his hand, the famous O'Brien family. Uh, brothers played, Mike O'Brien, and then his father, the great Archie O'Brien. So these coaches are going to be prepared, and that's what you're seeing right now. That's the, good uh, info. I did not know that. Yeah, the players are... Uh, are prepared defensively. You see great defense here by number 20, Derek Jellin. Turnaround, uh, Luke Basilico, his first bucket of the game, and we're tied up 4-4. Four to four. Yeah, and, and that's something Basilico did not have a year ago. That's a beautiful, nice left-handed jump hook. Watson penetrates inside, can't get the finish to go over the tall tree. Basilico back the other way for Grand Island, Wilkes. With a turnaround off the glass, a little too much rebounded Watson, and he'll immediately put it on the floor and give it up court for the Falcons. To the high post. Here's Walk. 
Show and go to the basket, can't get it to go. Back the other way come the Vikings. Ooh, we traveled. Nice move. Now what Grand Island's trying to do there, Chad, they're trying to break them off the dribble, and if the first drive's not there, they're gonna hope that the second and third is. But uh, right now, I, I'm loving the matchup between the, the two big guys, the two seniors. They played against each other for four years, and they're probably both used to playing the silicone on the block, his shot can't go. Watson with another rebound. All right, nice. They, they okay. reverse the ball, get it inside, and there's Walk. They finally got it, the, the matchup they won, and Walk delivers a bucket. Yep, and that was all, that was the execution that Coach O'Brien was talking about. What you saw there was a back screen, so then Grand Island switched it. So then Basilico switched off to guard somebody else. Uh, now you're Wheatfield playing intelligent basketball, recognizing the mass matchup that you, you recognized. Now I, I always like the rule you want to switch on screens, but only if there's a screen. Like right there, uh, it looked like Grand Island was in position to play good defense. They didn't need to switch. Traditional three-point play completed. Luke Walk, you know, he's got a nickname around here. I don't know if you're aware of it. No. He is the chairman of the boards oh. because nobody cleans the glass quite like that in a young man. Yeah, I, I believe uh, you gave him that moniker, correct? I might have. I might have. Yeah. And I think he earned the title, and I think it's a good name for him. All right. Well, One of my favorite stories about this young man is I'm sitting here watching the last time I was here. Billy Beeline's here, the NCCC coach, great young coach. I asked Billy, are you looking at Luke Walk? He's like, yeah, I'm going to talk to him after the game. He approaches him after the game. He said, you ever thought about on Triple C? And Luke told him, I think I'm just going to go to trade school and make some money. I'm not trying to play basketball after high school. Well, yeah, that's not everybody's goal. I loved his honesty. I loved, uh, I, you know, he wants to be a farmer, and I respect that. He wants to get to work. He wants to learn a trade, and he wants to work. Well, Young man who knows what he wants to do. Right now he wants to grab rebounds for Niagara Weefield. Yeah. But that rebound's grabbed by Jellin, and as soon as, Grail, as, soon as Jellin had that ball, he takes a foul in the backcourt. Yeah, Wilkes has had a couple golden opportunities in and around the basket that uh, that uh, he's fully capable of finishing. I know his father was a great player, played for Burgard in the early 90s, and then transferred to Cheektowaga Central my senior year, 95. He was ahead of the transfer portal by 30 years, Chad. Yeah, I, I, I thought about uh, texting you on a nickname there for Walk. I thought the... The big fundamental would have been a good one, too. The big fundamental was already taken. Ah. Tim Duncan has it copyrighted. Possession will stay. Niagara Wheatfield, the ball last touched by Basilico down there. Out of bounds to the Falcons. That's Derek Jellin inbounding on the baseline. Jellin, heck of a baseball player for the school. Yeah, and a phenomenal defender, and he's capable of knocking down a big shot when needed. But nice job by Gary denying that post-entry pass from Watson. It stays with Wheatfield. It allows Watson to splash one from the wing. Keeps the net swished. The refs will fix that 10 to four. Yeah, and that's a, a part of Watson's game that he's vastly improved on. Uh, you know, he had, he's always been the hustle guy of the team, the heart of the team, unselfish player. But now he's shooting that three-pointer with tremendous confidence. I was going to say that. Shoots it with confidence. You can see that ball the way. As soon as it comes off his fingers, yeah, he it, believes it. Yep, and has a beautiful backspin, and he's efficient with it. You know, he doesn't try and jump a foot and a half off the ground because he doesn't have to. No, I think they had Gary in the corner, but they passed on him. 6-5 on the shot clock. Long jumper tries to glass. That was Jake Castiglia, but Basilico keeps it alive. He can't get his putback. Rebounded by the chairman of the boards ahead to Jellin. We've got three seconds left in the quarter. They got it into the post. They're going to call. Yeah, tough call there. Looked like yeah. more of a jump ball. I apologize. 23 is uh, Dion Cleveland. That is not Wilkes. That is Dion if, uh, if my main man Jeremiah is watching, I apologize on that. Last play of the quarter gets sent right back by the uh, drop-down curtain. 
that hung a foot too low for a Wilkes shot. That's how the first quarter ends. We're going to go to break. That first quarter brought to you by Immediate Care. Celebrating 50 years of business in Niagara County, Comfort Plastics manufactures a wide variety of consumer goods. You can buy our popular patio furniture at leisureaccents.com, our classic snow sleds at theretroracer.com, and know that all of our products are proudly made in the USA, and your purchase supports 150 hardworking families right here in western New York. Comfort Plastics, a believer in the American dream. Learn more at comfortplastics.com. Logistics Plus is a global transportation provider headquartered in Erie, PA, with locations worldwide, including right here in western New York. Logistics Plus is consistently recognized as a fast-growing transportation and logistics company, great supply chain partner, top freight broker, leading project cargo manager, and a great place to work. With a strong passion for excellence, our 500-plus employees put the plus in logistics. For an efficient, personal approach for all of your transportation needs, more information about our Buffalo office is available at logisticsplus.com slash buffalo. Back at the center court game of the week here in Niagara. We feel Grand Island and Niagara Wheatfield on center court joined by Ryan Mountain. Yeah, going back to uh, Sean Watson, you know, he, he had that phenomenal sophomore season. You remember that hustle play at Buff State to uh, pull off that huge upset against Williamsville East. Um, you know, this year he's taking his game to the next level. You know, he leads the team with 15 three-point shots, but he also leads the team in assists with 44. And that tells, tells a lot about the savvy senior. And he also leads the team with 20 steals. So he's doing it on both ends of the court. And when you get leadership like that from your senior and hard work, uh, from your senior, good things are gonna happen. And when you get a bucket like that in the paint from Luke Basilico, it's 10-6. Grand Island opens the scoring in the second quarter. Back at the other end, Basilico picks up the foul in the post. Yeah, per and perfect example there with the post feed. You know, uh, Sean didn't think about it. It was bam, wing, and then boom. Hit uh, Walk right in the face, is where, which is where a lot of post men like to receive it because I always tell my players, aim towards the face, you'll guarantee he'll catch it. <laughs> You know, people tell you how hard Luke Walk worked in the offseason to get himself where he is this year, and I'll tell you that just leaving the glasses on the sideline from the start of the game has been a big part of his success. I watched him several times last year. He would always get his glasses knocked off a couple minutes into the game, throw them to the sideline, and then start playing basketball. This year he starts the game without him. Man, he's been on a tear. Chairman of the boards. Yeah, great matchup. Uh, two big guys, a lost art, right, Chad? Two of the best bigs in the area. Let's be honest, that's what they are this year. Both having good seasons for their teams. Wilkes. And the Basilico rebound gets it to go. He's off to a nice start. Six points for Luke Basilico. Yep, that's, that's a gamble. Walk left to try and contest the shot, but he left his man. Nobody slid over to pick him up to keep him off the boards. And unfortunately, Wheatfield gave up the easy two. You feel like you've been, we've been seeing more of that this year since New York legalized gambling? <laughs> That's Grand, Grand Island. Out of bounds, last touched, Falcons, Grand Island ball. Yeah, Derek Jellin, number 20, has drawn the responsibility to guard the great scorer, Jace Wilkie. That was number one on Coach O'Brien. We have to contain him if we got a chance. Let's see how Grand Island can work to get him open. And that was a really nice uh, play there. Wilkie set the screen for the center to get a high percentage shot. Watson to Connor West. He steps in. Nice drive, nice finish, Connor West. He checks in and gets his first two points of the game for Niagara Wheatfield, leading 13 to 8. Under six minutes to play in the first half. That is an excellent way to get a, a score open, is when they set a screen. And that's what Wilkie did last possession. Wilkie stays with the play after that shot misses. Now here's Dane Brown, three pointer missed. Well, that's two. That's a tough call. Is that uh, the freshman, Dane uh, Brown, number 15? 
Pretty sure he's a freshman. That is the freshman, Dane Brown, number yeah. 15. Coach O'Brien was concerned with him. He said uh, they've got to be disciplined. They want to stop Wilkie, and they want to stop Basilico, but they don't want to give wide open shots to the freshman Brown because he's an excellent three-point shooter. You know, speaking of the freshman Brown, I was noticing when I'm looking at Grand Island's roster, and this is the way you build for the future and get your program on the map for good. One sophomore, two freshmen, and an eighth grader on this varsity roster this year. Not a lot of seniors, and they're pretty good. Yeah, things are changing. You know, 30 years ago, to have a sophomore on varsity was like Coach O'Brien played uh, out at Iroquois for his father. That was unusual. Now these kids uh, are, are starting younger with the trainers and so on and so forth, and they're playing younger. Walk, nice job, takes the feed from... Kyler Adam, Adam Kyler, right up, two points, 15 to eight. Yeah, Kyler, an another excellent uh, complimentary player. Uh, Coach O'Brien knows he's got two all-star players and a group of excellent complimentary players that all understand and embrace their role on the team. And what I love about them is they just don't think. They see Walt open in the post, they just give it to him. You know, they're not taking it and putting it right to the floor. And that's why you're seeing excellent scoring out of the Falcons. Four and a half left to play in the opening half. As Grand Island takes some time to be deliberate with this possession. Under 10 on the shot clock. Wilkie way out on the wing. Not in a good position to score. Now there's new chair on the baseline, and that's going to be a shot clock violation. Not a good possession there for Grand Island. Yeah, uh, was that 33? Uh, Roman Nucciaro, the uh, he just came back from St. Mary's. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he's got a catch and face. So anytime you get the ball in the, fo in the post, always catch and face. Look opposite. You know it was late in the clock there, but he might have had a play to make. Watson had it on the baseline, sent it out. Now they find Watson in the corner. His three-point attempt misses. Brought away quickly by Wilkes. Phenomenal transition defense there I was just going to say that Nagy Weefield is doing a great job of getting set up defensively and, and really making Grand Island work every possession here. They're getting nothing in transition tonight. Yeah, and that three looked good, but Sean knew. I was shooting a corner, uh, three-point shot. I better get back. Because if it misses. Nice job getting inside there by the freshman. That's Dane Brown, averaging 8.8 .8 a game. He has his first two points here tonight. Yeah, you got to love how the Falcons, they dribble with a purpose. You know, we've, we've watched a few teams the last few weeks that, uh, you know, that's their philosophy. They want to attack with a dribble, and that's all fine and dandy, you know, but that's how those teams are built. The Falcons are not built like that, so they're playing in very intelligent basketball. K.J. Wilkes, nice job for Grand Island. He got up and denied that post feed. I don't think that's Wilkes, uh, Chad. That, that's, uh, our numbers are a little bit different here. We apologize. That's Deion Cleveland, number 23. Well, Yes, Wilkes is the one, uh, number 13, that jumped up and denied that pass. Uh, 13's Neville. I believe it's Neville. Jeez, Jonathan we've been messing Neville. that up the whole game. Yeah, we have, See, that's why we've we got two different these. rosters, but we got them all set here. here just got to rearrange our, our table. I here. took my roster right off the Section 6 website that Coach Chris Simpson was nice enough to fill in at the beginning of the year. <laughs> but passive enough not to update before I took it off this game. That's all right. It's all about attention to detail, Chad. I was trying to explain it to you earlier. In the, I'll tell you what. But you, were, you had your hands full, literally, with that cell phone. And you're, you're talking to millions of people around Section 6 basketball. That, uh, that's a, they all, they all think all I want to talk to them. <laughs> nice trap. Watson, and he's going to the line. Fouls on Basilico. Nice shot by Watson to come in. And we got the replay right here. You can see it. There's the trap in the corner. He steps in front of that pass, draws the contact, and one. Yeah, that's just smart basketball from the Falcons. You know, they first are 
probably trying to jam the outlet pass to slow up that fast break from the Vikings. But anytime you got some in the corner, it's an advantageous situation to trap because you have the two other defenders, the two sidelines. But then to get the steal and immediately look to the basket, I love it. Well, I got a lot of talking to do to make it all up to Jonathan Neville. I've been calling him Wilkes for almost half the game. And meanwhile, Wilkes, the eighth grader over there, probably on the bench thinking, man, I got a lot of I got a lot of airtime today for doing nothing. Well, like uh, I think there's been a Wilkes playing for Grand Island for 10 years. Nice rejection on the baseline. All right, nice job pushing tempo here with patience. And spacing. Oh, nobody talked. Wilkes got the steal, but it looks like Weefield's gonna hustle and keep the possession. Nice. Wow. After all that. Trophy winner, but it's Jeremiah Neely who was the star wideout at six foot three. The senior small forward on the hardwood leads the team with 15 points per game so far. And they will be leaning on him. He puts ink in a lot of the stat categories, rebounds, steals, assists. We mentioned Leighton Roberts. Num uh, Nicholas Bianco, too, is another guy they're going to be leaning on to score but also do the other things necessary to win a basketball game as the jv game continues on they're under two minutes to go on the junior varsity side saint francis has cut a 10 point deficit down to five with a minute 53 to go in the fourth quarter in front of us currently the jv team from canisius is up 55 50. So we'll keep an eye on that for you. PJ, you've had a lot of experience coaching at the varsity level. How much does it mean to the varsity guys, if anything, when the JV team pulls out a big win at the buzzer? Well, if you're a program, it means a lot. I mean, if you're a program and you wear the same jersey, uh, you're aware of it. I know the varsity guys right now are getting themselves locked in for this game. But these are two nice JVs. And isn't it funny, Jack? It seems everywhere we go somebody's coaching or refereeing that played for me. <laughs> the JV coach for the Canisius Crusaders, Joe Zira, played for me in 2002 wow. in the old Empire State Games. Tough player went on to play at Geneseo. Friday Night Lights continues on. Friday Night Lights supported by our members and by Great Erie Federal Credit Union committed to improving the financial well-being of the community. You mentioned the Empire State Games. You've told me a little bit about that oh, for our first-time listeners. What were the Empire State Games, and why don't we have them anymore? Olympic-style competition. We broke the state up into six regions. And why don't we have it like we don't have other things? It's money, but what an unbelievable event it was uh, for a long, long time. I wish our young people now could experience uh, what we had for the young people and myself many, many years ago. So you broke the state up into six regions, so that means you were coaching players from where? Well, western region was uh, Buffalo, Rochester. Central was Syracuse, Binghamton. Hudson Valley uh, was down there near West Point in that area. We had Long Island, uh, we had New York City, and we had Adirondack, which was the Albany region. How did western New York fare in we that? Always, well, we always were competitive. And again, it was Olympic-style competition, so there was so many different uh, sports where people were involved in, and not only with uh, our scholastic young people, but the Con for Plastics bringing us this 30 second timeout. So 12 points in the game now for Luke Walk. 10 for Sean Watson. 22 of the Falcons, 26 points come from their dynamic duo. Yep. And a, and a nice job defensively on Watson. He's gotten most of his points on broken plays uh, and just being in the right time at the right place. He understood those two steals. I'm going to the basket. <laughs> Someone will look for me. There we go. Here we go. Shot clock is off. Vikings ball. Neville. Nichero. Here's Basilico. Back to Neville. We got 10 seconds on the clock. Wilkes drives in, turnaround, long jumper, tough shot. And that's how the first half will end. Niagara Wheatfield's got the undefeated Vikings doubled up at half, 26 13. 
that quarter. Brought to you by Confer Plastics. We will be back here in about eight minutes or so to get you set up for the second half. Niagara Wheatfield leading your center court game of the week, 26-13 over the Vikings. I'm center court, Ryan Mountain. We'll be back in eight. Thanks, guys. Celebrating 50 years of business in Niagara County, Comfort Plastics manufactures a wide variety of consumer goods. You can buy our popular patio furniture at leisureaccents.com, our classic snow sleds at theretroracer.com, and know that all of our products are proudly made in the USA, and your purchase supports 150 hardworking families right here in Western New York. Comfort Plastics, a believer in the American dream. Learn more at ComfortPlastics.com or like us on Facebook. Hi, my name is Lisa Roosevelt, owner of the Rose Barn Grill, located at 199 Scott Street, downtown Buffalo, in the heart of the city. Great place, friendly atmosphere, have great drinks, have great food, and we have awesome customers. If you come to the Rose, I guarantee you coming back. What does it mean when people say America is a land of opportunity? It means the power to discover. To redefine yourself. To improve yourself. To challenge yourself. To realize there's more in you than you ever knew that you could do. It means giving people an open field to explore what they do best. With the best tools. The best training. The best technology in the world. We bring out the best in the people who serve. So you can be all you can be. Do you insure a lot of businesses? Yes, we do. How about restaurants? We got a bunch. Do you cover property damage? Yes, we do. How about my equipment? Covered. How about sewer backup? We got it. What if my cook gets hurt? They're covered. Foodborne illnesses? Covered. What if my party tank goes down? Covered under property damage. And you see this is all under one policy? One policy. When do I pay? Once a month. Just one time? Just one. Is there anything you don't cover? What's your record for consecutive questions asked? 31. Tables. <sighs> we don't do tables. Gotta love Buffalo. For more information, visit www.paulwolfagency.com. Logistics Plus is a global transportation provider headquartered in Erie, PA, with locations worldwide, including right here in Western New York. Logistics Plus is consistently recognized as a fast-growing transportation and logistics company, great supply chain partner, top freight broker, leading project cargo manager, and a great place to work. With a strong passion for excellence, our 500-plus employees put the plus in logistics. For an efficient, personal approach for all of your transportation needs, more information about our Buffalo office is available at logisticsplus.com slash buffalo. Western New York Immediate Care's new locations are now open. Whether you've suffered a minor injury or just aren't feeling well, Western New York Immediate Care provides safe, quick, high-quality care at an affordable cost. Our clinicians are trained to diagnose and treat non-life-threatening injuries and illnesses and are equipped with on-site x-ray and labs to help you feel better, faster. With four convenient locations open seven days a week, Western New York Immediate Care is here to help when and where you need us. Visit us online to learn more.
Logistics Plus is a global transportation provider headquartered in Erie, PA, with locations worldwide, including right here in Western New York. Logistics Plus is consistently recognized as a fast growing transportation and logistics company, great supply chain partner, top freight broker, leading project cargo manager, and a great place to work. With a strong passion for excellence, our 500 plus employees put the plus in logistics. For an efficient personal approach for all of your transportation needs, more information about our Buffalo office is available at logisticsplus.com slash buffalo. Do you insure a lot of businesses? Yes, we do. How about restaurants? We got a bunch. Do you cover property damage? Yes, we do. How about my equipment? Covered. How about sewer backup? We got it. What if my cook gets hurt? They're covered. Foodborne illnesses? Covered. What if my party tank goes down? Covered under property damage. You see, this is all under one policy? One policy. When do I pay? Once a month. Just one time? Just one. Is there anything you don't cover? What's your record for consecutive questions asked? 31. Tables. We don't do tables. Gotta love Buffalo. For more information, visit www.paulwolfagency.com. Western New York Immediate Care's new locations are now open. Whether you've suffered a minor injury or just aren't feeling well, Western New York Immediate Care provides safe, quick, high-quality care at an affordable cost. Our clinicians are trained to diagnose and treat non-life-threatening injuries and illnesses and are equipped with on-site x-ray and labs to help you feel better, faster. With four convenient locations open seven days a week, Western New York Immediate Care is here to help when and where you need us. Visit us online to learn more. Celebrating 50 years of business in Niagara County, Comfort Plastics manufactures a wide variety of consumer goods. You can buy our popular patio furniture at leisureaccents.com our classic snow sleds at theretroracer.com and know that all of our products are proudly made in the USA and your purchase supports 150 hardworking families right here in Western New York. Comfort Plastics, a believer in the American dream. Learn more at comfortplastics.com or like us on Facebook. What does it mean when people say America is a land of opportunity? It means the power to discover to redefine yourself. To improve yourself. To challenge yourself. To realize there's more in you than you ever knew that you could do. It means giving people an open field to explore what they do best. With the best tools. The best training. The best technology in the world. We bring out the best in the people who serve. So you can be all you can be. You're watching another live stream production by 300 Level Media, LLC. 300 Level Media can highlight your business by incorporating commercials, live reads, and corporate logos throughout our WNY Athletics events. WNY Athletics is the premier high school sports streaming service in New York State. Covering regular season contests through the state championships and everything in between with over a million views annually. You can find more information about advertising on any of our platforms at WNYAthletics.com slash become a sponsor. Back here at Niagara Wheatfield for the second half of the center court game of the week. The Falcons leading Grand Island 26 to 13. That 10 and 0 mark by the Vikings is in jeopardy. Coach Mountain, what do you got? Well, you gotta go back to their keys for success. You know, I think uh, 
Coach O'Brien is, is checking all the boxes. He's staying true to his offensive execution. They're moving the ball well. Um, I don't know if they're winning the battle on the glass, but they're doing a darn good job on it. And they're definitely containing the great scorer, Jace Wilkie. He's averaging 22 a game. He's well below that. Um, Three, ex yeah. to be exact. <laughs> uh, and then for Coach Simpson, I think his, uh, you know, with Basilico getting into foul trouble, that, you know, obviously affected the game. He's kind of like where he's at, though. They're one, one run away from being right, uh, making this a, a, a two-possession game. Uh, obviously, Grand Island would like to see more than 13 points on the board. And I think they're going to. You know, they're one of those teams that once they start hitting shots, they all start hitting. And that's what was always most scary about Grand Island. Adam Kyler with his first points of the game for Niagara Wheatfield on a little drive and scoop shot, 28-13. Basilico in the high post sends it out to the corner. Nuchero, now it's in the hands of Wilkes. Wilkes well defended once again. Yeah, now he's got uh, Adam Kyler on, on Wilkie. So he's Coach O'Brien switching up his dis defenders, keeping them fresh, which is excellent. Neville, tough shot, gets it to go. Turnaround, Jay, from far away. Yeah, and you'll live with that. It's great defense. And yeah, I'd live with that anytime. Making him you know, make how a many tough of shot. Yeah, how many of those can you make? That's a good one. But uh, put it up. Nice up and under. What an up and under. Gets the extra space for Walk. Great move, great finish. 30-15. Yeah, Basilico's got to keep his hands down, play with the feet first, because Walk, his game is with his feet on the ground. You know, he's not an above-the-rim player. So Basilico's just gotten, he's gotten caught up in the air way too many times. And his arms We're going to take higher. a quick break here. This timeout brought to you by Immediate Care. Celebrating 50 years of business in Niagara County, Comfort Plastics manufactures a wide variety of consumer goods. You can buy our popular patio furniture at leisureaccents.com, our classic snow sleds at theretroracer.com, and know that all of our products are proudly made in the USA, and your purchase supports 150 hardworking families right here in Western New York. Comfort Plastics, a believer in the American dream. Learn more at ComfortPlastics.com or like us on Facebook. We're back. Niagara Weefield Center Court Game of the Week on WesternYorkAthletics.com. Yeah, just to finish my point, um, Basilico's got to stay down and not fall for the fakes. But Okay, so Coach O'Brien uh, went back to the defensive specialist. Kyler. Kyler, okay. I anticipated that, and here's why. It could have been just a crisscross situation where the other player got on him, but Coach O'Brien's a great scorer. He understands the psychology of the game. And it was almost like Jace knew he had someone the same size and he could just shoot over him. So O'Brien back with a more physical defender. I stand corrected. <laughs> yeah. Wilkins with another pull-up jumper. That one was automatic. That was a good-looking jumper by Wilkes. Yeah, excellent balance. Yeah, I expect Grand Island to get uh, cooking here on the offensive end. They put up a lot of points. Excellent job, see? There you go. Ball into the down. post. That's it. He did exactly. He's listening to you from your broadcast over here. Stayed down, kept his position, rejected. Well, he probably uh, heard it from Neville. Ass drive, dish, Nuchero, nothing. Assistant, Short. Assistant coach Kulikowski over there on the Grand Island bench. There's a steal in transition by Brown. Watson tries to poke it back, chucks it over his head. Neville is there to grab it. Keeps it alive. Nuchero right to the rack for two. Yeah, Coach O'Brien just took a peek up at the scoreboard, thought about maybe using a 30 there. He's going to play on, trust his senior leadership. Ah. And a little carry called there on Watson. Yeah, it's always tough when you're trying to catch, turn, pivot, and dribble all at the same time. You know, bad things happen. You always want to catch, face, and see before you attack. Now, if Grand Island can just get through this. That's a right foul. to the post. Wilk, Wilkes tried to turn and pop shot. 
It's nothing doing. Watson tries to get through everybody. He does. Yeah, it's imperative for the Vikings that they uh, get through this third quarter without Basilico getting into foul trouble, first and foremost. They got a chance. All right, so Coach O'Brien has uh, switched to his three defense, which is a sliding 3-2 zone. When you got a good physical player like uh, Jalen right there, you could do that. What he does is he plays the top when the ball goes to the wing. He's got the high post. The ball goes to the corner. He goes down and plays the low post. Yotis gets the ball to the corner. There's Watson. Bang time from the corner. Sean Watson for three. He's got 15 points. And the Falcons have their largest lead, largest, largest lead of this game with 420 left to go in the third quarter. 16-point lead. Man. I don't know if I was trying to get a tongue twister out or what. I didn't want to come. Don't foul. That's a tough one there. They got a golden opportunity for a uh, high percentage shot. Didn't take care of it. Nice job staying down. And nice job finishing the shot by Watts or Walk. Excuse me, Walk. Yeah, and then credit Coach O'Brien for Trusting his seniors, not calling that timeout when there was that little shift in momentum. I don't think Basilica was expecting Walk to take that shot, and it was a very deliberate move he made. Well, he's home, and he's probably taken about 2,000 shots from that spot in this gym. Wilkie's missed three-pointer. Gets it back into the hands of the Falcons, Watson. A little too strong, and now Nuchero pushes it ahead. He does not have numbers, so he's going to pull up a shot from straight away. Nothing doing. Yeah, good shot by Nuchero. I, I think they need him to get involved in the offensive end. That he's, I think, their third leading scorer. Yeah, he's averaging uh, 10. Long shot just inside the perimeter. Walk knocks it down his second. Longer shot of this half, 39-19. It's a 20-point lead. We've got a timeout on the court. It's going to be a full timeout taken by the Grand Island Vikings. And that's going to set up a timeout. This timeout will be brought to you by Confer Plastics back in just a moment. Do you insure a lot of businesses? Yes, we do. How about restaurants? We got a bunch. Do you cover property damage? Yes, we do. How about my equipment? Covered. How about sewer backup? We got it. What if my cook gets hurt? They're covered. Foodborne illnesses? Covered. What if my party tank goes down? Covered under property damage. And you say this is all under one policy? One policy. When do I pay? Once a month. Just one time? Just one. Is there anything you don't cover? What's your record for consecutive questions asked? 31. Tables. <sighs> we don't do tables. Gotta love Buffalo. For more information, visit www.paulwolfagency.com. You are back. WesternYorkAthletics.com is how you're watching. It's the center court game of the week. Well, it'll be interesting to see if uh, Coach Simpson starts to press. Um, but what, 2.48 left in the third, you're down 20. So I gotta think if they score, they're gonna get up and try and speed this game up to create some extra possessions, extra shots for his ball team. Center's out. Basilico getting a, a breather. Basilico and Neville take a seat on the bench. And there's Wilkie coming in with a little floater in the lane. That goes 39-21. All right, so no press, but it looks like they are in a zone, so he's going probably trapping. There's your corner trap. He's gone small. They get the ball to the corner. There's Evan Yotis. Splash. Yeah, and that's when Niagara Weefield is very, very good. When their complementary players are knocking down three-point shots, they're almost unbeatable. Second triple of the frame for Niagara Weefield. 21-point lead, their largest. Nuchero, he's got the answer. Yeah, and Coach O'Brien wasn't happy about that. He wanted uh, a little more Sean to get out there. Yes. Yeah, like I said, you these NFL games, you cannot take a possession off. They're just, they're just tough to win. It takes a lot to win these games. Coach knows that. Nice Neville. pass 
Gets it down inside, a little pump fake and a finish. Derek Jellen. Yeah, again, uh, if you're the Grand Island defender there, you gotta stay down, brick wall. That's Nuchero from the same spot, he just felt it before, this time catches a little iron. Yep, and uh, stays Wheatfield ball. Excuse me, it will be Grand Island ball. Yeah, he dribbled it on the baseline, which is it's tough. Anytime you have a loose ball situation, always want to grab the ball with two hands. Try not to dribble out of uh, nice play. That's a great defense. That's a nice little play, Chad. Uh, Jace was going to go out to the corner for the three, and he, he said, nope, he slipped it right to the middle of the paint. That was, that was, that was really impressive. Wilkie gets it in. Nuchero rejected Watson. Now Gary has it. Yeah, Grand Island's really struggling to get a good, clean look at the basket. Excellent defense by the Falcons tonight. On the floor. And Watson mm. got tangled up. Lucky was able to hang on the ball quick enough for the Falcons to get that <sighs> timeout. That should be their 32nd timeout. Yeah, and that... That's a tough one uh, if you're in, in Coach Simpson's spot when you see four Vikings standing there and not one of them got on the floor. I'm sure they're going to hear about that right now. But um, hey, good time, good opportunity to give uh, Greg Ross a shout out, who's a longtime Hall of Fame coach at North Tonawanda and also came over and coached for Grand Island and took them to the semifinals. Uh, bowing out to Al Monaco in uh, one of those great teams with Lakata. But uh, Greg Ross not only is the only man to ever coach either or, or both Grand Island and North Tonawanda, but he also uh, had Coach Simpson at his, as his JV coach at Grand Island and Coach O'Brien as his JV coach at North Tonawanda. So uh, Greg's enjoying his retirement, living down in the Florida Keys. So hello, Coach. Hope all's going well. Fun facts brought to you by Coach Mountain during our 32nd timeout. Deion Cleveland breaks up that entry pass, sends it out of bounds. Possession stays the Falcons. Now we got Jellin and Downing on the baseline, right in front of the cheerleaders. Gets it into Walk. Walk pops a baseline shot. Rebound to Nuchero. Yeah, I'd like to see Grand Ion play with a little bit more urgency on the defensive end. That's Agreed with you. And I think we should point out what a great job, once again, Weefield's done of just that, not allowing that ball to get inside. Yeah. Gelling the quick hands. That's a tough spot on the floor. It's all geometry. It's tough to get a post feed in there. You want to go corner and then flat down that baseline, giving Basilico an opportunity to seal Walk. Shot clock's off. There's some good urgency. Yep. See, just that little Seven bit seconds left in the quarter. Walk sees it. Ball's on the floor, zips it to the corner. Now Connor West going to try and get this last shot off. He doesn't draw anything. It's rebounded by Deion Cleveland, and that's how this quarter will end. End of the third quarter, 44-24 Niagara Wheatfield was brought to us by our friends at the U.S. Army. Be all that you can be. Celebrating 50 years of business in Niagara County, Comfort Plastics manufactures a wide variety of consumer goods. You can buy our popular patio furniture at leisureaccents.com, our classic snow sleds at theretroracer.com, and know that all of our products are proudly made in the USA, and your purchase supports 150 hardworking families right here in western New York. Comfort Plastics, a believer in the American dream. Learn more at comfortplastics.com. Logistics Plus is a global transportation provider headquartered in Erie, PA, with locations worldwide, including right here in western New York. Logistics Plus is consistently recognized as a fast-growing transportation and logistics company, great supply chain partner, top freight broker, leading project cargo manager, and a great place to work. With a strong passion for excellence, our 500-plus employees put the plus in logistics. For an efficient, personal approach for all of your transportation needs, more information about our Buffalo office is available at logisticsplus.com slash buffalo. Welcome back to your center court game of the week at Niagara Wheatfield. I'm center court, joined by Ryan Mountain. I'd like to thank Empire Electric for sponsoring this game for us tonight. 
Tony Paul Vereni over at Empire Electric is a good man, does good things for high school sports, and his company does good things when you need your power fixed. Empire Electric. Well, we're going to need some electricity out of the defense from the uh, Vikings there, Chad. It's Friday. What is it? It's finish strong Friday. You're right it is. Oh, yeah. Nice defense there. Good high active hands. Travel. Neville drives in. Spin. Reset. Dane Brown. Everything's getting closed off. Nice You're going to have to take long shots, say the Falcons. All right, good possession there. Another rebound for the chairman of the boards, Luke Walk. Coach O'Brien is up coaching like he's down 20, and that's how you got to be. Good foul. They get it inside to Connor West. His shot doesn't go, but he's going to get a chance at the line, and another foul on Basilico, his first of the second half. He's done a nice job staying down, as Coach Mountain would say. Is that Larry Sidelines we just saw walk by? Well, I have no this idea. name over the years a lot. I think that's Larry Sidelines, the famous NFL photographer. This is the game. Amen. St. Francis. Pray for us. Once more, we welcome you to Apple Springs as we're just about ready. Finally, about 45 minutes past our allotted tip-off time for tip-off between St. Francis and Canisius here at St. Francis High School. Glad to have you with us for WBFO's Friday Night Lights presented by Zenner and Ritter Home Services for plumbing, heating, and backup power. Jack Cruiser, P.J. Cauley with you as the starters are introduced for the Canisius Crusaders. P.J. Pat Benzer in the starting lineup, joined by Jaden Clark, who is a six-foot junior guard. Benzer, the 6'6 senior center. Nick Purdy, the 6'2 junior guard, starts for the Crusaders alongside the 6'1 junior Johnny Esposito. And rounding out the starting five for Canisius, the 6'5 senior forward Mark McDonald. It's a really good Canisius lineup that is nine and two so far. This starting five, Ex, uh, Exodus is Alex Hayes, if you will, as the 6'2 senior guard we expect to see come off the bench. He started the season real hot, but hasn't scored more than two points since the end of last calendar year. Yeah, well, Canisius is all about team. Those are the starting five, but there will be seven, eight, nine ball players going in that all contribute to their success. Well, it's the same on the flip side for St. Francis. The star is Jeremiah Neely, 6'3", senior small forward that leads the team in scoring and rebounding. He is joined by the 5'8", senior point guard, Nicholas Bienko, the six-foot senior forward, Nathan Gonsioric, the six-foot senior guard, Leighton Roberts, and the 6'1", sophomore guard, Andrew Lindstrom, a lot of the same type of players for St. Francis. They certainly do, and Lindstrom getting the call in his first start because of the illness to Nolan Edwards. 
St. Francis wears their home white uniforms. Canisius, the visiting Grays. Up, it is tipped by Canisius to win the opening tip. Jaden Clark down the far sideline as the Crusaders attack the basket to our left, but a high pass evades that outstretched arm of the 6'5", Mark McDonald. Right wing three for St. Francis is good. Leighton Roberts starts the scoring with a bomb from downtown. Poor execution by the Crusaders against the zone. Turnover, Roberts nails it. Johnny Esposito runs the point. He's the third year varsity man, just a junior. Left wing three for Purdy, off back iron rebound, fought for by Neely of St. Francis. He snags it. Thought three nothing lead, 40 seconds in. Thought it was a poor shot by Purdy. He had young McDonald down near the baseline, open for an easy one. The 5'8 point guard, Bienko, to the near wing, Gonsiorik, back up top. They play catch, Gonsiorik, just in front of us on the right side. St. Francis drives the middle of the lane. Right elbow jumper for Andrew Lindstrom is beautiful. 5-0 lead for the home. Red Raiders just a minute into play. That'll get you going as a sophomore in your first start. Hit a little 10-footer. Jaden Clark inside the 2-3 zone. Layup from the right side is good for Johnny Esposito of Canisius. Coach Husband said on that possession, we're going inside to the teeth of the zone. Good execution by the Crusaders. Three-point lead, Jeremiah Neely for St. Francis rises up through the lane and floats it in with the right hand to extend the lead back up to five. Canisius slows down against this 2-3 zone of St. Francis. Benzer on the far wing, up top, around the horn, left wing three for Esposito, short offensive rebound, Benzer to the cutting Purdy, his layup is strong, defensive rebound, Lidstrom of St. Francis. Coach Husband wanted a call there as Purdy got to the glass. Referee Jeff Helmbrook says, didn't get him that time. Andrew Lindstrom to Neely up top, far corner, drive of the baseline for Roberts, he's denied by Clark and Esposito, but a foul called against Canisius as the Red Raider went up for the layup. This is what we talked about in the, in the, uh, in the opening, Jack. Canisius, you better be ready to play here. You can't be looking to a game Monday. The Raiders mean business here. They're out working you early. It's a lot of red, white, and blue behind the basket that Andrew, or check that, Leighton Roberts attacks on this free throw. First one around and out, a miss. A lot of fans wearing their Bills gear in preparation for the playoffs, which roll into town on Sunday. All the St. Francis students are silent as their senior shooting guard goes one of two from the stripe, knocking in the second. Eight to two, St. Francis leads. 5.40 to go in the opening quarter. Now, St. Uh, Canisius must get inside this zone. If you play around the perimeter, that's what the zone's designed to do. Euro step move from Purdy. He gets the ball poked away by St. Francis's Bianco. Quickly in transition, Lindstrom drives to the post. He loses the basketball off of Jaden Clark's fingertips and out of bounds at the baseline. The moment doesn't appear to be too big for young Lindstrom. He's got a basket and he went right to the hole on that one. Just got the ball tipped out of bounds. From the left trigger, Bienko inbounds to the far wing. The 6-3 Neely drives, goes up with two hands, is short, rebounded by Jaden Clark, and a foul just after that as Neely picks up his first for St. Francis. He's got to be very disciplined there. He got a little frustrated. He didn't get the call, and now the call goes against him. They need him out there tonight. First foul against St. Francis. Fouls are one apiece. 5.15 to go in the first frame. 2-3 zone moves well for St. Francis as it swung to the right corner. Three on the way, perfect. Pat Cullinan from the far wing cuts into the deficit. It's 8-5, St. Francis on top. Young Patrick Cullinan plays like his father and his Uncle John did. A lot of confidence. Cullinan came off the bench to replace Pat Benzer. Atop the key, Bienko for St. Francis with a three-point lead. Right elbow jumper, off front iron, rebound to the lane. Caught by Jaden Clark, the wide receiver from Canisius, turned shooting guard. All the way through the lane, Purdy raises it up with the light. It's strong. Defensive rebound, Neely of St. Francis. Bienko at the left angle, picks up his dribble. Mark McDonald's all over him. Much lengthier is this Canisius defense playing a man-to-man. -man. Right corner. St. Francis drives with a jump stop of Leighton Roberts to the right elbow. Shot clock down to 15. 
in the near corner. A drive of the baseline denied by Clark. Outside, Neely's triple off to the right. The heel of the rim got it, and Canisius got it right after with Cullinan. With a dish down low to the left of the basket, the layup is strong from Purdy. Defensive board to Gonciorek. St. Francis in transition. Purdy's got to regather himself. Halfway through the first quarter, 8-5 lead, St. Francis. Bienko dribbles on Purdy. Hand off to Neely up top. Will you uses a spin move, but loses possession through the lane. Canisius comes away with it. Clark, Endu, and Rush finishes with the right hand at the rack. 8-7. Canisius has yet to lead. St. Francis holding on to a one-point advantage with three and a half to go in the first. St. Francis has played with great energy so far. Leighton Roberts, double team on the right of the lane, kicks it up top. Bienko, a jab step on Clark, uses the screen of Lindstrom to the near side wing. A cut from the right corner by Roberts, denied by Purdy of Canisius. The white uniform of Roberts stops and spins outside with a handoff to Bienko. Guarded by Cullinan, Bienko's deep jumper rattles in and out. Far side, it is tipped by Canisius' McDonald and hauled in by Clark. On the near wing for the Crusaders, a jump stop move, kick to the far corner, wide open, a triple try for Hayes is short off the iron, rebound grabbed by two Crusaders, they both give it up, it deflects off of the body of Pat Cullinan flying in for the rebound and out of bounds, St. Francis ball. A couple things are evident right from, right from the start here. St. Francis is gonna have a hard time with their dribble drive offense. Canisius cuts the basket off very well, you're gonna have to do a great job cutting and screening. Both teams average about 60 points per game. 2.35 to go in the opening frame, an 8-7 lead, make it 11-7 as a deep three is drilled by Nicholas Bienko for St. Francis. Canisius at the Franny's logo, to the right wing, a deep three in response, short from Cullinan, offensive rebound Esposito. Near angle, Clark to the right wing, Hayes through Main Street, dish to the left, a foul as Esposito went up from the low left post. He was met by the 6-1 sophomore Andrew Lidstrom of St. Francis, who picks up the second team foul, his first. How about that pass by the big guy, the offensive lineman, Patrick Enright. That's one more pass, and Johnny Esposito's on the line. He misses the first. Jack, I'd like to see Canisius screen this zone a little bit here and not just be perimeter oriented. Johnny Esposito calls Niagara Falls home, went to LaSalle prep for his elementary education. He sinks the second, going one of two from the stripe on the trip. 11 to eight, St. Francis hanging on to a three point lead with two minutes to go in the opening frame. Canisius using a full court press to try to wear the Raiders down with the volume of players they have. Neely Where drove down the paint. He lost control of it to the left wing. His teammates there to recover in Matthew Zielinski. St. Francis resets the offense with 10 to shoot. Bienko, front court left, spins on Clark. Pulls up at the left wing. Dish inside on the pick and roll. Bickerstaff lays it in with the left. Well done. Take advantage of the overplay. The old back door was open. The 6-1 junior, Henry Bickerstaff, extends the Franny's lead 13-8. Left wing three for Canisius is short off the hands of Clarence Funderburg. Defensive rebound for Jeremiah Neely of St. Francis. Deep three off transition for Bienko is short off the iron. Defensive rebound, Hayes of the Crusaders. Double team as he crosses the timeline. Pass to his right, caught by Esposito. Right corner three for Clark. Off to the left, weak side rebound, Neely of St. Francis. If I'm Kyle Husband, I'm saying we gotta get to the basket every time before we fire. That was a quick three. The Raiders take advantage. Final minute of the first quarter. Five point lead for St. Francis, who control with their point guard, Bienko. Drive left of the lane, he is down on the baseline after taking a spill up against Johnny Esposito. It goes out of bounds off of Johnny Esposito and out of bounds at the baseline is where St. Francis will inbound. Neely subbed out. Henry Bickerstaff in motion on the inbound play. Tend to shoot. Roberts for St. Francis. Drives, kicks to the left corner. Three on the way. Good! T.J. Askew off the bench immediately makes an impact. 
16-8 St. Francis. Running jumper for Benzer is good. In the middle of the lane for Canisius, he cuts the deficit back down to six. Final 20 seconds of the first quarter. Shot clock is dark. Roberts to Askew on the left wing for St. Francis. Bienko spins away from Cullinan. Picks up his dribble. Near side wing. Seven to shoot. On the near side, Roberts controls. Switching off is the Canisius defense. Two at the buzzer is strong. And that will do it for the end of the first quarter. Before we take a break, we pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is high school boys basketball on WBFO. <coughs> Hang on. Sixteen to ten, St. Francis holds the lead over Canisius. This is WBFO, your home for high school sports. Celebrating 50 years of business in Niagara County, Comfort Plastics manufactures a wide variety of consumer goods. You can buy our popular patio furniture at leisureaccents.com our classic snow sleds at theretroracer.com, and know that all of our products are proudly made in the USA, and your purchase supports 150 hardworking families right here in Western New York. Comfort Plastics, a believer in the American dream. Learn more at comfortplastics.com or like us on Facebook. Back on WBFO, your home for high school sports. It's a 16 to 10 lead for St. Francis, who have lost 15 straight games to Canisius, going back to 2017. PJ Cauley and Jack Cruiser with you. PJ, as we get underway for the second quarter, what did you like from St. Francis? Energy, effort, they adjusted to the tough defense with backdoor play, a five-man motion. Look, those other games don't matter now. It's gonna get heated tonight. Zelinski to the near wing for St. Francis. A travel as Gavin Roberts tried to drive from the right arc in towards the lane. Just 15 seconds into the second frame, Canisius gets a chance to cut into the six point deficit. Nick Purdy back in the ball game for the Crusaders. Slow start for the all Western New York candidate. Esposito sets a screen for Clark on the right arc. Inside, pass right back to the corner. Three on the way from Benzer, you betcha. The deficit cut in half. It's 16-13, St. Francis still on top. Across the timeline, pressure comes. Canisius forces a turnover. Purdy up for Clark, right back to Purdy at the left. He lays it in. One point game, Canisius is down 16-15. Franny's needs a good possession here. Henry Bickerstaff through the lane, jump stop with the right, he's short on the layup with the right hand, a defensive rebound for Purdy of Canisius. Left arc three for McDonald, off back iron, rebound to the three point line on the far wing, spinning away, Roberts takes it for St. Francis, he had his pocket picked, all alone, Purdy rises up and floats it in with the right hand finger roll, timeout, Canisius. After taking their first lead on the day, Canisius calls for a 30-second break, 17-16. The Crusaders on top. Brian Ferris a little frustrated there. He went to his bench, and they got a little rattled. They got sped up. The ball went around all over the gym. It ended up in their basket. Those fellas have got to learn from that experience. So when they go in again, they play more controlled. Kyle Husband, on the other hand, he gave his team a tongue lashing after that first quarter, and they've seemed to respond. When I talked to Coach Ferris yesterday at St. Francis High School, he mentioned that it's the changes, and you mentioned it during the game against St. Joe's, PJ, when Kyle Husband gets a chance to regroup with his team for more than 20 seconds in between plays, he usually sends out a completely different defensive look. It forced two turnovers to start this second quarter. He's an experienced coach. He's going to make sure you're on your toes and you can execute, just as he is in this full court pressing defense right now. Out of the timeout, St. Francis wanted a foul on Bianco's defender, but Bianco broke away from it in time before the call. Left wing, St. Francis sets up offensively with Bianco at the elbow. Right arc three for Roberts, yes! Right back at you. St. Francis takes the lead, 1917. <clears throat> Good setup by Bianco, and Roberts gets his feet set very nicely. Quick passing for the Crusaders. Clark had some room atop the 2 3 zone. Kicks to his left. Three for Purdy. Rattles in. 
20 to 19. The lead goes back and forth. Canisius up by one. Seven points already in this quarter for Nick Purdy. Through the lane, BN go for St. Francis. Had it tipped to the far corner, held in by the jumping six foot senior, Leighton Roberts. To his left, a three on the way is strong. An air ball that tips off of Jeremiah Neely's hands on the weak side at the post and out of bounds into the St. Francis student section. That isn't large in quantity, but we can be sure if this is a close game down the stretch, they will make their noise heard.